painting to begin with, and it's organized in a very simple kind of geometric way. It has one slightly radical element in that it, in the end, the conventional rectangular format is not, a, you know, is not uh, placed in a conventional rectangle. Uh, because of the direction of the design, uh, it, it resulted in, uh, I was making vans and it resulted in a, uh, a block or a square being left here, which was in a way inappropriate to the sense of movement and the sense of organization of the whole painting. And so by taking that away, I kind of liberated both the shape and the design, and I got something that, you know, stood by itself pretty well. Although what actually was standing by itself in a lot of people's eyes was then and is now uh, quite meager. But that, you know, uh, that doesn't bother me in the sense that because the, the painting is because it has a kind of pictorial presence. And whether it strikes some people as being empty on an emotional level doesn't, doesn't really matter to them because it, it has a kind of pictorial resonance and it has a pictorial vitality and it has a pictorial life because it, it says something about picture making that is, uh, I guess in a certain sense, uh, you know, real or convincing or important and it, or a combination of those kinds of things. Uh, basically, it endures as a pictorial idea, or it has so far.
Mr. Stella, how does it feel to be part of art history? Well, it's hard to tell when you're part of art history. I mean, if I am part of it, art history, I guess it feels all right. But it's a, um, I think it's a, just a sense that you have to, you know, really pay attention to what you're doing, and you you give up on the sort of hoping for things to happen, and you have to sort of make them happen. I guess it, I don't know. It cuts down on your fantasy life quite a bit. I can imagine. Isn't it very difficult? Well, I mean, it's no more difficult than not being part of art history. I mean, it's really, but, you know, the, the part of becoming part of art history is something that happens after the fact. It's not, it's not something that you can really have much of a say in. After all, what you do is, is make the paintings that you want to make, and you make the paintings that you're able to make, and you hope for the best. And uh, after a while, uh, if you're lucky enough to live long enough, people remember what you did a little bit. <laughs> and uh, they're interested in what you uh, are doing now. You love extremities, Mr. Stella? Well, you brought it up, but I mean, there are extremes I think are important. I mean, you need to sort of, in order to work, I think you have to have a sense of what the extremes are, how far you can go and uh, how far you should go. Uh, I think it's, it's not possible to work without thinking in those kind of terms. After all, you do want to reach out as much as you can, and you want to sort of stretch your own abilities as much as you can. I mean, uh, I have to say that given this painting, which is behind me, which is an early painting, uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, that I believe that I had it in me to make the paintings that I made later on. Uh, I guess a kind of pretentious way of describing it is to call it self-discovery. But the truth is, you don't know your own abilities until you, uh, you know, until you go to the wall, and they're, you know, either you are able to or you're not. In that sense, you said, I didn't think I had it in me to make the later paintings as I make them now. Is it that you already then had a kind of, or not, you well, were I a kind of victim I... of a victim of the what people did expect from you, or no. you have never had a feeling? No, I mean, I actually didn't think that I wanted to paint those kind of paintings. And I didn't know that, uh, that I would be able to. Uh, as, you know, it, it didn't happen all of a sudden, but uh, gradually things changed and, uh, and uh, my abilities changed. Uh, uh, you know, maybe not all that much, but you do change and you, I mean, what makes it sort of, I guess, worth doing, I mean, it's like what makes it, it worth living, is that you do every once in a while, not very often, I admit, surprise yourself. I mean, you do, you do things you don't expect, uh, that you didn't expect that you would do. Yeah. Mr. Stella, when I'm like 20 years, I come here in this show, am I, have I the right to hate you, or just seeing how much and how strong work here is, and how can I get over it when I'm 20 and I'm a painter? Oh, you think that the impression on the uh, young painters, I don't think that they care about anything much about except themselves. I mean, they see the art that goes on around them, but I don't think they're going to worry that much about me or the art that I make. They'll either like it or not like it, and they'll have plenty of things to say about it. But generally, the main thrust will be, uh, you know, the concern for themselves and their own work. You never and thought about, uh, let's say, uh, finishing with work and just... Oh, retiring, yeah. stop being a yes. theater? Well, I guess on the level of fantasy, I did a little bit, but, you know, it's not very realistic. Yeah. I suppose I couldn't afford to, and I, I really can't do anything else. It's, I don't have much of a choice. I mean, this is what I can do, and I do it. Or you don't want to, let's say, start again with a, like, only drawing, making drawings, or... Just uh, well, I'm not liberating yourself from uh, what you were. Like no, what you I mean, were. I'm not sentimental in that kind of way. I mean, what I'd really like to do is what I guess everybody would like to do. I'd like to do what I do better and uh, just make it better. Yes. And Mr. Stella, what kind of jungle is this? Jungle or jumble? Jungle. <laughs> or perhaps both. Uh, well, I don't think it's a jungle. I mean, it's a, 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 maybe it might be a little bit of a jungle. But this is a, 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 a recent uh, painting, although to a lot of people it looked like a sculpture. And I think it, uh, you know, it's a vertical piece, and it's a lot like the one we saw before, the Newstead Abbey, 
And I think that this is about the best that I can do right now. And uh, I mean, I guess it's a, another kind of a, extreme, but I hope it's not an extreme ending, but rather an extreme middle, and that we haven't seen the extreme end yet. But this is just, this is another point, uh, you know, that you could use for reference in terms of the whole show and, and the work that I've made. And as, I mean, I have to say that this piece is sort of, you know, I guess I can't do much better than this. I sort of... <laughs> It's sort it's, of take it or leave it. It has something, uh, the, the title has something to do with uh, uh, Corvino uh, or? Uh, well, the title of this piece is a kind of inelegant word in English called the crotch. Uh, but uh, it, but it's, it's not an anatomical uh, reference, it's a, it's a reference to nature. But anyway, it's, it's from a, a chapter in, in, in Moby Dick. And these, this series is uh, largely uh, based on uh, or loosely based anyway on a, a, a series of forms that I use uh, which we call wave forms and a combination of waves and whales uh, sort of I don't know I got the feeling of uh, I don't know I used Moby Dick as a kind of the titles from the chapters in Moby Dick. Why did you do that for Mr. Stuff? Well I largely because I felt like doing it and they sort of reminded me of it in a way and the original idea for the shapes sort of came from going to the aquarium with the kids and looking at the beluga uh, swimming in the big tank. So something about the forms of the beluga whale and just whales in general and waves in the sea and uh, I don't know the kind of <clears throat> it just seemed to relate somehow to you uh, have in that sense I always have the idea when I read uh, Moby Dick that's something to do with uh, uh, let's say the, the sublime. You have any uh, reference to that or? Well uh, it's the sublime. I don't know if it's so sublime or it's uh, there's a lot of good and evil in it too but basically it's a kind of uh, you know, uh, adventure at a higher level, and uh, you know, it's just wonderful. But I mean, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, the, the association is loose, and I mean, I uh, just. Uh, but but I feel that the pieces, uh, you know, carry through. They have kind of the spirit of moving out, and they really they and they, they feel like to me anyway that they uh, very positive. I don't know, sort of like they're leading somewhere, like they're taking me on a kind of adventure or journey or whatever it may be. What you all also did uh, give titles of Calvino. What have you? What kind of relation you have with uh, literature, or just pure? Uh, well, I guess the Calvino titles uh, were based on the well, the idea of being sort of both childish and childlike fairy tales, and the possibility of taking abstract elements and relating them in such a way that they have a kind of narrative flavor. And uh, the, the way the paintings develop and the kind of relationships they have, uh, something akin to, or something akin to a, a right kind of simple narrative. I have the feeling that you talk about your work in a very uh, distant, not academic, but in a. You're not the type of romantic uh, artist, Mr. Well, I don't have a great stake in my work. I mean, sort of, I mean, I, and I, it's, it's kind of difficult to explain it, I suppose. But, I mean, it's not, strictly speaking, explainable. But, I mean, I think it's understandable. But the understanding of it is, I mean, basically a, a kind of visual pictorial experience. And so I say what I can. And then let uh, the viewer look and think what he wants. Yeah. It's a free, it's you, a free country. Yes. You have any idea how the, let's say, the, these newer works were, uh, uh, let's say, received in the beginning of the 80s? How the younger generation are? Well, it's hard to keep up with what the youth of uh, our planet is thinking. But, uh, you know, I mean, they go their own way and I go my way. I mean, yeah. it's a ship's passing in the night. I guess. Yeah. But you didn't feel it like, like a, for yourself a kind of a re rejuvenation? Rejuvenation? No, I felt tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's a good word, Mr. Stella. What is your greatest um, topic you want to talk about in art, or you do think about? Well, I really art? don't want to talk about anything. I'd like, I'd love to stop talking and yeah. start painting. I guess. Yeah. And thinking. <laughs> what is the topic? Well, you, you think know, it's hard to. Um, I don't know. It, it it is hard to sort of. I suppose continue, it's hard to sort of, 
I guess the most difficult problem is, is uh, one of, I guess, something you'd call self-referential. It's tiring or tiresome to always think about yourself and always to be dealing with your own ideas. It's nicer to bring some things in from the outside. On the other hand, uh, if you're an artist, your job is to bring something out of yourself that, uh, that's worth bringing out. And, you know, it's hard. And usually you might have something good to say, but it's very hard to keep on talking and keep on having something to say, especially for 30 years. So it's more like let the work speak itself. Yeah. Well, yeah, and hope that they have something worth saying. Yeah. You're preparing. <laughs> they have something to say worth saying. Perhaps my last question, Mr. Stella. You're preparing a new lecture, or no? Uh, I'm no. retiring from the world of talking. Yeah, really. I'm I'm through with the lectures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr.